mouth and uh, no, okay. it's always a delight and a pleasure to meet you understand your insights about the industry uh, so the idea for these podcasts have always been fairly simple what we've been trying to do is mission arbitrage which is uh-huh. across the industry leaders and across the real estate professionals so every week we are trying to come up with a theme and saying what we can do back to the for the ecosystem okay uh, so so to start with the beginning i I've, i've always been reading your interesting insights specifically based around yeah. technology and design and uh-huh. how this technology and design can affect the commercial real estate uh, so if you could like to put us some thoughts around it or some insights around it ki what do you think are probably going to be the changes in design and technology uh, specifically on the architecture side of it post covid 19 so i'll split this up into two parts now we know covid has had a huge impact and you know there's been a great work from home shift and uh, social distancing being the new norm so one is the design and one is the technology there are two great involvements that are going to come forward in the commercial real estate space basically our workspaces the, the regular workspaces we used to go to um sure. i'll go back a little bit to the 1970s 80s you know when spaces were being designed they were being designed um with about 120 to 150 square feet per person your desks more fixed desking you know and as time moved on there became densification of spaces uh then right. came in the open office concept then came in the agile seating concept so basically uh, agile seating more collaborative work spaces so pe- people can collaborate more sit on lounges more you know there was more loose furniture um uh, free seating more lockers got involved into design space if you ask me in terms of design going forward post line post covid 19 we are going to go back to the 1970s 1980s 1990s era there's going to be a lot of de-densification of spaces um i wouldn't say the open office concept is going to die the open office concept may stay but agile seating is definitely going to take a a huge u turn there's going to be a lot of fixed desking uh people will not want to sit in places where somebody has already sat or they don't know who has sat before them you know collaborative spaces which means a lot of people coming in together are going to tie out it's going to be people working at their desktops most of the meetings and all is going to happen online very less presence in 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 the space in the office you know where people have to come together and and create stuff or collaborate or do stuff cafeterias for example are going to come out you know they got to be more spaced out this all the design is now going to be evolved in keeping in mind social distancing so initially i mean we used to do designs at 80 to 100 square feet per person that went down when the co-working culture and all kicked in that literally went down to 50 to 55 square feet per person you are going to see that going back to 100 120 square feet per person that is the only way you're going to have to be able to maintain social distancing smaller desks smaller units are not going to last anymore you know two prop together is not going to last anymore now coming to technology everything has got to become touch free so when you enter an office it's all biometric you use your thumb your the door opens and everything facial recognition is going to be another key player thermal scanning you know uh printing via mobile app using your lift via your mobile app so you supposing it's a developer campus and a cisco employee is entering a developer mm-hmm. the developer will have to have an app installed when he enters a parking space the app lets him in you know he record, records his id less of interaction whatever technology creates less of interaction between two people may it be so you divide this in three layers one is your outer layer which is the campus layer then you divide it in the building in the campus building that will have to have its own technology and within the building there is the office that will have its own technology so security guard in the third layer meeting say the uh, employees who are coming in with their vehicles you know there'll be more of scanning than more of people actually going in taking a physical id signing a book registering and stuff like that we will enter the campus again lift lobby designs Uh, reception designs are definitely going to change they're going to be more spaced out again facial recognition move through boom barrier opens or you know your your tailgate opens when you're going to have um, a person just puts the on his app he puts the 
floor he wants to go to, the lift gives him access. You know, all those things are going to sort of start coming in and playing. Once they the offices, there will be obviously a little change in uh, how you enter your office. Again, facial recognition, no biometric, no signing registers, no doing stuff like that. Um, air quality is going to play a very important role. How the air is being circulated. Air technology for air quality is going to play a very important role. And also there's going to be a lot of technology in the office. So it's, I see it becoming a smartphone-based world. It is already a smartphone-based world. But we're going to see more of smartphone activity, more of apps being developed, new startups coming up who can basically cater the need of social distancing. So if I want to print something, you know, I want to get something picked up, I want to go to the cafeteria, I book my slot. You can't have in a cafeteria of 200 people, 250 people coming and standing in lines, no queuing up anymore. You know, so you book your slot, you get your slot, you get your seat allocated to you, and then you go and take your seat. So this is the things that I see in design and technology that's really going to change going forward. So I think a lot of positive impact also in terms of congestion and time utilization of professionals going true, forward. True, definitely, definitely, definitely. Productivity yeah. will go up. I'm sure, I'm sure. This is much needed. I mean, people used to crowd each other. That will change. Sure. So I, I think after COVID-19, it is definitely going to stay for at least next 8 to 12 months. I don't see an alternative for social distancing. No, I said 3 to 4 years. And uh, I, I beg to differ. Sure. 3 to 4 years. <laughs> sure. It's a new way of life. It's a new norm. And that, that too, if the vaccine comes in. If there is no vaccine, we may be... You know, I've already been telling my kids... You never know, you may be living like this for the rest of your life. You know, your masks and this and that may be a permanent fixture. You never know. Now, let's hope that that's not the new normative. And we start meeting yes. face-to-face again instead of these video calls. We can <laughs> shake hands and, and have our discussions like we used to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm very intrigued to understand. Uh, in your experience so far, uh, what has been something that corporates have been looking forward to? And what are some of the technologies that you feel has specifically not worked with Indian Dynamics? So, um, coming to what are corporates looking forward to, corporates are still fighting the battle between work from home, what I'm talking to my clients and the people that we've been working with. Um, a few of them, like TCS, for example, it's all over, you know, they, they said, okay, we've decided work from home. But there is corporates are still fighting the battle uh, with a lot of places, call centers and other places and stuff like that, work from home because of data security, connectivity, acoustics. There are many issues for people from work from home. A lot of, in India especially, a lot of people stay in joint families. So, you know, it's difficult for people really to work from home. Plus, they need to be... Um, that social well-being, the mental well-being of coming to an office space. A lot of... Uh, see, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune. A lot of migrant... Uh, employees who are there, who stay alone, stay in PG, stay in single apartments. So they are going to have a lot of problems with, um, you know, if they're just confined to their space or confined to their house, they need to get out. They need to see, you know, meet people, say hi to people, have lunch with somebody, even if it means six feet across, you know. So that's one challenge that the corporates are definitely uh, facing and they're just seeing how things pan up. There's going to be a lot of permutation combination. Each corporate is going to try a different structure. And finally, after about six months or something, you'll see a pattern evolve. There will be a pattern and then, you know, people will talk, discuss, webinars like this will keep happening. And then you'll see a lot of people, you know, finally say, okay, this model works. If we want to work from home, this is what works. And for the people that come into the office, this is what is going to work, you know, and a pattern will evolve. Otherwise, this is new to all. It's a challenge for all. I forgot your next part. What is the second part of the question you asked? Uh, no, I, I was asking about these open office flow plans. And I was asking you, what do you think our corporates going to look forward after COVID-19? What do you think corporates are going to look forward to? More fixed desking. Open so office will continue. Sorry? Number one, number one, it's going to be on the HSC side. The health side is going to get predominant attention now. Correct. So what are Correct. some other things you think? And what are some of your advices also to the companies who are looking forward to open flow plan now? going forward so open so they can still continue to have open that is not a problem at all but they cannot have agile workspacing anymore so there's open office and there's they cannot go on with agile anymore that is for sure because agile seating 
the employees themselves will not feel secure it is all about the corporates making the employees feel secure making them feel secure to come home every day the developer the campuses the building the office there are three la- different la- layers each layer has to give security to the employee to walk in from the the minute he steps out of his house sits in his own car and reaches his place of work there are three layers where he needs to feel the security once he enters the third layer that is the office space if all others are taken care of you cannot have agile seating anymore collaborative spaces are going to die down as i said so that is definitely going to be the change coming in in terms of open office collaborative spaces will move and more desks will come in but with social distancing with spacing there will be partition between desks now the desks are open desks you know without partitions everyone is viewing everyone you don't want somebody now people don't want somebody sneezing coughing next to you you know so there are going to be more partitions between people people are going to be sitting in mini cubicles you know larger space cubicles okay. keeping the distance from each other that's definitely going to come in fact there's a steel case uh, review also on this and they've already started working out on this i've heard about it that they've already started working out this desking which basically employ security and social distancing which has partition systems and all that's interesting i think we are going to see more of such products in coming days i think given that next definitely year. everyone's everyone's thinking and working on it already so uh, what do you think is the final impact of this digital culture on the smart office design what do you think is going to be the impact of this so the digital culture is going to ex- i mean it's going to explode if you ask me on smart offices because as i said the apps now there're going to be new type of apps there are going to be new type of the way of life is going to change what most of the startups uber apps that were developed before why were all these developed there was some shortfall in the system that the system needed i don't think they all started just to make money you know the whole idea was they started an app because they found like a grocery delivery or talk about swiggy there was some shortfall in the system now there is going to now if social distancing is a norm then obviously it's the this thing is going to be um everything is going to be app based everything is going to be on your smartphone as i said so the digital transformation in that angle is going to be pretty massive pretty huge and it has to be connected then to the buildings it has to be connected to the office spaces through your lift through your parking your cafeteria your places where you sit you know all that i've said before that is the huge massive digital transformation that we see is going to happen in the future no specifically because you spoke about uber and stuff i think the problem solving nature is going to continue i think after every economic crisis we have had startups who are going to solve problems and startups have emerged in a much stronger economy i believe even after 2008 Correct. i think we had uber and whatsapp to start Correct. with in 2009 and i think we are almost using uber and whatsapp on daily basis now exactly it's become a part of your life it's become a part of your daily needs swiggy uber and whatsapp you know now if you if you see as i said a lot of people travel a lot of people come in from outside cities and educated people you know you're trying there's talent hunt has always been a big thing so a lot of people come from outside bangalore has a lot of it's a cosmo crowd so many people from rajasthan mumbai karnataka kerala you know from various cities towns villages educated they come and work there they've used all these apps and they've created swiggy uber whatsapp so like that a lot of smart apps are going to come up we have to keep our eyes open maybe you can think of something and you can develop an app you never know you may be the next uber <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and what what effect do you think is going to have on the cost part of it i think every smart office technology will come up with a fixed cost and uh, will it be affordable for smaller corporates to get up, get away with this kind of cost is going to get more expensive see every small only not only smart technology but even the way you now work i mean just to execute a normal project is going to get more expensive um labor is going to get expensive incentivizing them to get back from the rural areas to the urban cities is going to get more expensive and now i'm diverting a little bit from the smart technology but overall the cost of building a project even if you call it a pre covid office a post covid office in the same specification is going to be more expensive and then you add on the smart technology like your air purification air quality tracking which has been a very big failure if you ask me till date you know uh it will be tracking it never been never it's never india india has especially not been able to um 
get the right numbers when it comes to tracing the air quality even within the air even within the office premises but we are going to have to find a way to smarten that technology it is going to be expensive it is going to cost more facial recognition is going to cost more than biometric you know your apps and then running the apps and then your cafeteria you're going to lose space you're going to it, it is definitely going to be a more expensive era you know, coming forward smaller offices will take a beat the, but the more they do it the better for them you know there's no other way to securitize or or feel, make your employees feel comfortable to walk into office every day sure and and what are some of your advices to architects who are graduating now on what should be they focusing on their career uh, architects and interior designers uh, should they be looking at the smart technologies and trying to understand doing some of the courses online over that part Definitely. what are the some of the areas in that in your experience this architects and interior designers should look at so smart technology is definitely a thing and i think they need to go back and also study how work and designs and layouts were planned at least for interior offices i won't talk about buildings it's not my expertise but i'll give a little bit whatever knowledge i can share on that but at least in in, in designs of offices where before i said the 1970 90 1980 eras you know they'll have to go back and study what was done there obviously not copycat the same thing because you know we're in a different era completely but try to replicate the same thing in today's day and time post covid is definitely needed um there are a lot of courses of smart technology smart design that they can take up they can specialize you know now architecture has become very specialized you know people take architecture courses but then they specialize in something you know they specialize either in technology or somebody can specialize in you know work optimization or less optimization or something but they can specialize in something for sure um it comes to buildings um people can look at you know how buildings can be more secure what technology is needed in the buildings what changes in the lobby spaces or what changes in your elevator design your entire building uh, design needs to change in uh, taking in mind post covid uh, hsc activity hsc part at least so for the shared spaces do you think the co-working boom will continue to rise uh, given that the challenge around the design i'll tell you the co-working can only rise Uh, it won't rise as per me but for them to survive let me tell them right now the seating that they have they are the ones who push the bar from 70 80 square feet per person to 50 55 square feet per person uh, now you guys have done it to 30 35 square feet also <laughs> but that's ridiculous <laughs> okay. ridiculous so they are the ones who push the bar and what's going to happen is now they have to remodel their spaces they have to declutter it they have to de-densify it Okay. so if they are ready to put that cap anyway you know co-working was having issues with funding or you know expansions and stuff like that if they want to densify that means it's a capex cost they have to go back pull out a few sheets put things aside this that and everything now if they want to densify do they have the capex to do that point number 1 if they can do that change the certain add in the technologies in the building create security for the people who are coming and yes they will survive also what they need to do is a lot of collaboration so today you must be knowing this there are about 400 plus of co-working spaces within the country right operators within the country registered operators they need to consolidate so if there is a space now i'll talk about bombay bandra what what are most of the co-working people done they have done they have done a space so if i have a space in bandra then i'll go to goregao then i will go to varli you know now but there is another co-working operator who's near me who is somewhere close by so i need to collaborate and with them so those 400 have to become about 20 or 30 you collaborate so if my space if i have done the right things in my space and my people are ready to come but now if i had 1 lakh if i say 1000 seats i can only accommodate 500 so i've got another 500 that need to be accommodated the smaller co-workers the co-working people are not working collaborate issue you know they can sort of move if it's not available here not available on 14th road you go to 16th road or two lanes or two blocks next door but collaboration is important you need to survive as well so i think fundamentally what you're trying to say is the real estate cost has to be a secondary cost and the primary importance also has to be needs to be given on the capex cost and that lot of capex collaborations have to be done or besides which i think the capex cost is so huge it looks almost as much as 2000 rupees a square foot I think it's going to be Correct. a huge number for smaller operators specifically to sustain. So 
so i think yeah. i i'm completely sync with your thought that ki you know uh, at least uh, because in my experience uh, of financing some of these co-working operators has very clearly been that they need to consolidate that's the only option left out, i think the last who will be standing till the end of the day is going to survive i think true so so what are some of the other thoughts that you'd like to add uh, i'm almost done with all my questions but is there any spe- is there anything specific that you'd like to add around this so nothing i think we've covered most of it um we just we are also waiting and watching what happens post covid era i mean we we've, we've talked about smart technology we've talked about design but there's any another large aspect on which is missing is you can have all the design and the technology on paper but now it is getting back to work and having you know we are contractors basically we are design build we are design build firm so we design but then i'm but 80% of the work is the build the apex goes towards the build component of it and now to be able to build on site with social distancing having the workers maintain the hygiene having you know that is another very big task that needs to be answered um i have 21 years plus experience in industry my father has about 50 years plus but nobody's worked on the construction side with social distancing so you can say procurement design tendering billing you know all these verticals will still continue to function more or less the same way but our major large function which is execution on site is going to face a huge challenge nobody's done it before it's going to be you know so today we can't if our clients come to us and they say okay you know this project was stalled we which projects in midway or new projects which we are just about to start if 60 days was the timeline now what is the revised timeline there is no answer to that question till we don't <laughs> hit the ground till we don't work in social distancing till the laborers are not tuned to doing it in social distancing on on a construction site you will not know how what activity how long it will take the planning is still to be learned still to be known it's still something we got to evolve we have to do it collectively with our clients ipcs you know everyone is a teamwork that's another part which we have to see so again technology in that thermal scanning you know maintaining so i see there's a lot of technology maybe mapping of labor on site everyone gets a card that basically says okay they are they maintaining the distance a minute two people get too close you know somebody from the safety team or somebody can see do these two people have got too close move them aside screening it's it's going to be a little it's going to be a little and especially working in developer campuses and live offices so you know <laughs> you have to be more careful so so the safety people who have been enjoying shade all this time are finally going I to come on the know, side not- <laughs> they are going to be in the forefront they are going to be the leaders not the project managers it's not the design team it's not the ipc it's not the project managers the safety team is going to be the leaders most responsible and most answerable to if anything goes wrong see we have to understand whatever we do we got to take care that we don't let this pandemic come into a second wave we don't let this you know happen again um the virus is here to stay unfortunately the virus can't go anywhere unless a vaccine doesn't come what i'm hearing what the world is hearing is going to take another 18 months at least to come in manufacture it administer it to the rest of the world um and you know make sure the virus is completely eradicated like polio was eradicated it's going to take another 3 4 years of as per date keeping that in mind you know we have to make sure that whatever steps we take we take as responsible people responsible organizations responsible states countries and a responsible world it's everyone's responsibility from the smallest to the largest you know that we don't let it again spread of the pandemic we learn to live a way of life and control this in every every field every sector basically i think we all i i mean i completely agree to the fact i think we all have to come together and nobody can try to uh, take advantage of each other now we have to collectively work towards how are we going to educate specifically the blue collar workers true sure. the white collar workers can still be given notices and red flags and all of that i don't know how we are going to deal with the, the blue collar workers exactly that's that's exactly what i'm saying getting them <laughs> to work in line for them <laughs> so as i said technology there may play a role also you know it depends there must be something you know we can think about you know something that we can do mapping you know give them sensors you know something something but we'll have to learn how to work with that that also in the future very insightful discussion sir thank you so much i mean 
Thank this you. has been very insightful. Gave us a lot of highlights on how the future of smart offices can look like, probably. True. Thanks so much for taking your time out. Thank uh, you. It was great to have you. Thank you so much. Sure. Send me the link when you can, yeah, later. If I can. Sorry. Is this webinar? Can I share this webinar? Yeah, yeah. Of course you can. I'll send you the link immediately after once we're done. Thanks. Thanks so much. You take care. Lovely, sir. Thank you so much. Nice talking. Thank you so much for joining. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.